Mirai here, and today I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to follow, assist, and target any character from any window in almost any game. In order to make this happen, I'm going to be tapping into a new feature of IS Boxer that was recently introduced known as Variable Keystrokes. The Variable Keystroke feature is aimed at games that offer either a limited in-game macro system or don't even offer one at all. Now, whatever game it is that you are playing, you'll need to figure out how to target, assist, and follow other party members through whatever means the game provides. This is not going to be a traditional step-by-step -step guide for a specific game because different games offer different solutions to this. In a game like Lord of the Rings Online, the in-game keybinding system reveals that we can, in fact, target different party members by using the F keys. The same goes for EverQuest 2. Lord of the Rings Online also has an assist key that is set by default. EverQuest 2 has an assist key as well, however, it isn't set by default. In this case, you would need to assign a key yourself. Keep in mind that if you do need to manually assign a key binding, you should try and assign the same key on all of your characters. Now, it was pretty straightforward figuring out how to target and assist party members, but what about follow? Well, neither EQ2 nor Lord of the Rings Online offer a follow key by default. So, now what do we do? Well, EQ2 does have a built-in macro system that we can use. We can just create a macro using the follow command. Once the macro is made, we'll need to bind it to a key. In EQ2, I can just drag the macro to a button on my bar, which already has a key assigned to it by default. This follow macro will also need to be created on each of my characters and preferably assigned to the same key. On the other hand, Lord of the Rings Online doesn't offer your usual macro system, and I don't claim to be an expert at this game by any means, but here's how I set up follow. Lord of the Rings Online uses an alias slash shortcut system which works similar to a macro system. Using the shortcut below, I bound the follow command to a quick slot. I then bound that quick slot to Alt-1 as you can see here. Again, I had to repeat these same steps on each of my characters to set up follow. And now that I know which keys are used for targeting, assisting, and following in both games, I can move over to IS Boxer. Now I would like to mention that by no means do you need to use the same keys that I did in this video. I used these keys because they were either the default values or they were keys that I felt comfortable using. With that being said, let me talk about how and where variable keystrokes can be set. You probably already noticed that there is a variable keystroke section here. This is the master list and if you needed more variable keystrokes than this, you would add them here and they would appear in the drop down lists throughout IS Boxer. Because this is the master list, if you set any keybinds in this section, they'll be treated as global keybinds, which means they'll affect all games and character sets in this entire IS Boxer profile. In addition to being set here, variable keystrokes can also be set on a specific character, character set, or character slot. I'll go over why there are multiple locations to set a variable keystroke a little later in this video, but for now, I'll be demonstrating these in the character set and character slot only. Now, in both EverQuest 2 and Lord of the Rings Online, the party order is not the same across each character. This means we'll have to set up the keys used for targeting party members on a per slot basis. I'm not going to walk through each slot because it becomes redundant setting up six keys for six characters when the concept is the same across all of them. I'm only going to show how this is done on two different slots and then speed through the rest. For this next part, it helps to have your game UI in view. Make sure that you're viewing whichever character slot you're currently configuring or else this won't work correctly. As you can see here, I'm currently viewing slot 1 while configuring slot 1. This is where it can get confusing, so pay close attention. Now, which key in-game needs to be pressed for slot 1 to target slot 1? The answer is F1. Now, hold on. If you're immediately confused as to how I came up with that and what is going on, you can make this easier on yourself by asking a question for each one of these. For instance, which key in-game does Adesia, the slot that I'm currently configuring, need to press to target Enoth. Looking over the game, I can see that it's F2. Does that make sense? Look at the next one. Which key in game does Adesia need to press to target Iradia? Looking at the party list, F3. Which key does Adesia need to press to target Egojo? F4. To target Atulia? F5. 
And finally, to target Amarella, F6. Does that make a little more sense? Now, those just happen to fall in order, so I'll switch it up and jump down to slot 6 to show how this is done on another character, but I'm not going to bore you past that. Same method as before, which key in-game does Amarola, character slot 6, need to press to target Adasia, who's in character slot 1? According to the list, it's F2. Which key does Amarola need to press to target Enoth? F3, to target Aradia? F4, to target Egojo, to target Atulia, and to target herself. Remember, F1 is reserved in EQ2, and most other games, to target yourself. Hopefully this is making a little bit more sense. You'll have to finish the rest on your own, but to move this along a little quicker, I won't be setting them up in the video. Now, don't forget about assist and follow. For me, assist and follow are keys that will remain the same across all characters, regardless of whoever is the leader. Therefore, we can set these variable keystrokes in the character set itself. There we go. Now, Iceboxer can assign these variable keystrokes automatically where it needs to. We're almost done, just a few more hotkeys to set and we'll be good to go. Jump over to the non-combat key map and expand it. Set a hotkey for both follow me and assist me. These are keys that you're going to be pressing in game to make your other party members follow and assist you. So pick a hotkey that you'll remember and is convenient to press. The final step is to export this profile to inner space and then cross your fingers that this works. Just kidding, of course this is going to work. Now, if everything was set up correctly, you should be able to seamlessly swap between party members and have the rest of your team follow when you press your hotkey. Just like this, as you're seeing here. Now, to test if assist is working correctly, you can target something on whichever character you'd like and then press the assist hotkey that you set in IS Boxer. Watching my slave screens, you'll notice that they all acquire the same target as my lead. Now, while I didn't show it in the video, I did set up Lord of the Rings Online using the exact same method. And as you can see here, it works the exact same way. I'm able to swap to each character and have the rest of the team follow me. And to test assist, watch my slave screens. They acquire a target. We are good to go. Now, I hope you didn't think we were done because next, I'd like to talk about the in-game variable keystroke editor. That's right, there's an in-game editor so you can change your variable keystrokes on the fly. This comes in handy when you find yourself in a position where your team gets reordered for whatever reason and the keys you were using for targeting don't exactly work anymore. This could happen for a number of reasons, and if you get thrown into a situation like this, it's not fun, and you can quickly find yourself powerless as a multiboxer. So, let's pretend for a moment that Adasia is being played by a buddy who isn't multiboxing, it's just someone who runs with me on a regular basis. This would be me running my five characters and my buddy as the lead. Now, pretend we're in the middle of a dungeon, and Bam! His girlfriend becomes furious that she's not getting any attention. She cuts the power and he gets disconnected. Pop quiz, hotshot. What do you do? Well, I know that I can continue the dungeon without him, but now my targeting keys are all screwed up because they mostly relied on him being part of the group. So here's where this comes into play. Pop open the in-game GUI, click on the variable keystrokes tab, and start changing things. You're using the same method as you did in IS Boxer by asking yourself which key does this character need to press to target this other character. You'll notice that the slots are conveniently labeled with the names of your characters in the current character set in case you don't remember which slot goes to which character. One thing to note about this in-game editor is that these settings are not saved back into IS Boxer. This means that if you need to reload or restart or whatever, the variable keystrokes in your ISBoxer configuration will be loaded and will override your changes made through the in-game GUI. The in-game GUI settings are temporary because when you need to make on-the-fly changes, 
they are usually temporary changes. So once the battleground or raid or dungeon or whatever is over, I can just reload my icebox or character set and everything is back to normal. The in-game GUI is pretty straightforward if you understand how variable keystrokes operate, so moving right along. Earlier I mentioned you could assign a variable keystroke on a specific character, character set, character slot, or globally. These four areas are effectively layers or tiers on which a variable keystroke can be assigned. Let me give you an example of how this process works using my EverQuest 2 character set. When I export from IS Boxer to Innerspace, variable keystroke tables are created. The foundation of these tables is built from first examining the key bindings in the global section. I don't happen to have any variable keystrokes assigned in the global section, so these tables remain empty. After that, each character set is analyzed and more key bindings are assigned if they exist. Remember, the character set is where I assigned assist and follow, so those fields get populated. Next, Iceboxer turns to the character slot looking for more variable keystrokes. My targeting keys are set in each character slot, so those two are added to the tables. And finally, each specific character is checked for variable keystrokes, and if present, they will also be assigned. I have nothing set on the character level, so nothing in the tables change, and this is what they will look like after I export from IS Boxer. Do note that if there were any conflicting key bindings in any of these four areas, the priority at which variable keystrokes are assigned, starting with the lowest, is global, character set, character slot, and specific character. If you're still a little confused about the different tiers and conflicting keybinds, check this out. Let's look at the assist target variable keystroke on one of my characters. From watching the video, we already know that this variable keystroke is set to F in my character set. If I add a second assist target variable keystroke in my character slot and export my settings to Innerspace, that new key will take precedence over the other and will be the key used in game. Likewise, if I add another assist target variable keystroke to this specific character and export one more time, that new key would override the other two. See how this works? If you find yourself making changes to variable keystrokes and they're not taking effect, this could be one of the reasons why. In closing, this video wasn't meant to be a walkthrough specifically for EverQuest 2 or Lord of the Rings Online. It was meant as a guide to help you figure out how to use variable keystrokes for whatever game it is that you want to multibox more efficiently. I'm showing that you should be looking for certain key bindings or some sort of in-game macro system that you can use to your advantage. Also, variable keystrokes are not limited to just following, assisting, and targeting. They can be used for whatever you need them for, but again, this is game dependent. Some games are much more multiboxing friendly than others, and Lax is always trying to make Iceboxer more compatible and user friendly with those types of games. Finally, I would like to personally give a big, wet, and sloppy thank you to both Alge, my brother from another mother in the Southern Hemisphere, and Creo, who happens to have a PhD in Lord of the Rings Online. They both helped me wrap my head around variable keystrokes so that I could create this super awesome video for the rest of the community. If you happen to see either one of them in the IRC channel or on the forums, feel free to give them a slap in the ass and tell them good game. Mirai, out.